1.3 billion people rely on livestock for food, nutrition and livelihoods. Animal source foods provide crucial nutrients that are not easily obtained from other sources. Meat, leather, wool and milk make up 40% of agricultural value in high-income countries and 20% in low-income countries. But according to FAO, livestock contributes 12% of global greenhouse gases, including 30% of anthropogenic methane worldwide, varying across production systems and regions. About 88% of these emissions come from enteric digestion of ruminants, released through belching. The remainder comes from manure. Greenhouse gases, including methane, contribute to global warming and climate change. While today, low to middle income countries and high income countries produce around the same amount of livestock methane emissions, it is expected that by 2050, 66% of global livestock emissions will be from low middle income countries as populations and incomes grow. This means that we must work to ensure that the development of the sector occurs along a low emissions pathway. Countries need to reduce methane from livestock digestion and manure to hit their climate targets and transition to more sustainable and efficient livestock production. Most currently available methane reducing technologies target feed. Technologies include methane inhibitors, tanniferous forages, lipid diet supplementation, concentrate feeds and genetic selection of animals that produce less methane from their food. It's the microbes in ruminant stomachs which produce the methane and there are ways to alter this. Methane inhibitors that target these microbes can reduce methane emissions by an average 30% per cow. One of the most promising is Beauvais, scientifically known as 3-nitro-oxypropanol. Beauvais has been developed by Swiss-Dutch company DSM Fermanich and is now approved for use in more than 50 countries. For systems where livestock mainly feed through grazing pasture and rangelands, the only effective approach is to increase the productivity of the animal through climate-smart livestock practices. This includes improving feed and forage, animal health, pasture and rangeland management. We can reduce emissions from manure using simple interventions like managing moisture and oxygen levels, Microbes which don't need oxygen can convert methane into biogas, which has a double benefit as it can also save use of fossil fuels. What is needed to develop and scale these technologies? First, we need more testing in different livestock production contexts to take many technologies from early stages to practical implementation at scale. Secondly, we need government policies and incentives, such as subsidies, to reduce the cost of technologies together with regulatory standards. Thirdly, farmers need to know about the technologies and require training on how to use them, taking into consideration social and cultural norms. And fourthly, we need to remove financial and market constraints for producers. We need more private sector investment and public sector incentives. Consumers need the price of animal products produced in a sustainable way to be kept low. If we're going to successfully reduce livestock emissions, the international community needs to come together. We need to share good practices and innovation. We need policy solutions that encourage the private sector to invest and research to fill gaps in knowledge on livestock and climate. Investing in climate-smart livestock practices is the best way to reduce methane emissions in low- to middle-income countries, whilst also improving livestock health and productivity. By doing so, we not only help farmers adapt to climate change, but we also reduce livestock's carbon footprint.